I'll be talking about the number of people who are here watching, and uh, with me this time is Patrick Moore, who perhaps more than anybody else on the team is aware of just how important this particular flight, this last one is. Aren't you, Patrick? I am indeed. You know, centuries ago, Sir Isaac Newton said that he'd seen further than other men because he'd stood on the shoulders of giants. Now, this Apollo is going to do more than the rest, I think, because it's been able to stand on their shoulders. And even the choice of the site in Taurus Litro has been determined by what the earlier Apollos have told us. And quite apart from being the last Apollo, this is new in quite a number of ways. It's a slightly more reliable and sophisticated spacecraft to start with. And, of course, various new experiments are being carried out. Largely concerned with the moon, but not entirely. And, of course, for the first time, uh, a qualified geologist is going. Dr. Schmidt is a professional geologist who's been trained as an astronaut. Instead of an astronaut, who's been trained as a geologist. Now, please don't think I'm trying to decry the earlier astronauts who have done magnificently well. But, of course, now, for the first time, we have a man up there who really knows his geology from A to Z, and it's only to be expected he'll be able to provide more information than the rest. Now, quite apart from that, you know, uh, there's something here that hasn't been, I imagine, present in many of the other Apollos, at least not since number 11. Because this is the end of an era. And in addition to being the last Apollo, this may, in fact, bring back more information than most of the others put together. It's absolutely vital to the entire space program. And here at Cape Kennedy, as we sit there, watching that rocket in the distance, the atmosphere is simply unbelievable. James. Yes, it's very much uh, it has a tremendous awareness that this is the last one and that this is the biggest rocket to go and it has the, the, the greatest amount of thrust on it, much bigger than any other Saturn that's ever gone. It's the 12th Saturn to lift off from the pad here and it's the, in fact, it's the 27th launch. A launch that costs no less than $450 million. I said there were a lot of people here before, the president here, there is a star-studded uh, cast of VIPs watching that rocket out there, including all of the astronauts. Two and a half hours after it was due to go. Apparently what happened, apparently what happened was that the, the third stage tank was being filled up with liquid oxygen, which is uh, one of the two types of fuel it uses, when uh, it wasn't turned out not to be filling up properly and so they decided to fill it up manually and while doing so the computer somehow got the impression that the lateness of the repressurization that was going on because they had to decide to do it and then actually do it physically uh, because of the lateness the automatic sequence computer it said to itself it's not happening on time and uh, according to its own rules it cancelled the launch at 30 seconds to go the crew have been up there now since the uh, hold was declared. They're, they're pretty tired. They've been talking about the fact that perhaps they may cut down on some of their activities up in, uh, in orbit before they set out for the moon. And uh, NASA uh, has decided to try and go exactly six minutes from now. That swing arm just moving or just due to move away, the swing arm that connects the astronaut to the gantry. At this time, the various elements of the launch team have been reporting into Bill Ship, the test supervisor, indicating that we are go to continue. Mission Director Chet Lee just verifies that we are go for launch. in the case that we have a go. First stage test conductor, this is the man who has charge of those five first stage engines which will give us the lift off, has indicated a go for launch. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly also giving us a go for launch and finally the launch director Walter Capri and says we are go for launch. We've passed the five minute mark now and swing arm number nine. This is the access arm to the spacecraft. It's coming back to the full retract position. It moves back alongside the mobile launch tower, and it will remain there now through the final portion of the countdown and the launch. At the T-minus 60-second mark, 20 nozzles will start flame deflector deluge of 13,000 gallons per minute of water pouring down on that flame deflector. So a great deal of what is seen at launch time, which looks like smoke is actually steam as this water is burned off, this water to cool the pad area and to cool the equipment uh, alongside of the uh, launch tower as the water also pours across the swing arms on the launch tower. 
We're approaching the four minute mark in the countdown now. T minus four minutes, five seconds, and continuing to count. At the four minute mark, we'll stand by for a final go from Norm Carlson, the launch vehicle test conductor. He's given a go. The uh, launch operations manager now switching over to the uh, Astrocom circuit. This is the circuit that the astronauts, the launch operations manager, and the uh, spacecraft communicator will remain on. They uh, have this private circuit to keep extraneous talk off of their circuit. Uh, they are they are checking in. They are checking in now on the Astrocom circuit, uh, indicating that they are go. Spacecraft has indicated they are ready. Instrument unit uh, ready light has come on. S1C at the first stage. Preparations are now complete as we approach the three-minute mark. There's quiet in the firing room now as the engineers and technicians are monitoring their consoles. They're monitoring the various rates, pressures, temperatures. They can override the terminal sequencer if they uh, cite a problem that it has not picked up. We are on that terminal sequencer now. We've passed the three-minute mark, T-minus two minutes, 47 seconds and counting as we are on the terminal sequencer. At the T-minus 50-second mark, we'll be looking for that critical power transfer. This is where we transfer from the external power source, which has been feeding the three stages of the launch vehicle, to internal power, to the flight batteries uh, aboard the space vehicle. Expected that uh, given proper weather conditions, people will be observing this flight from as much as 500 miles away. This includes a large portion of the southeastern United States, the northern tip of Cuba, and the Bahama Islands. Now approaching the two minutes, two minute mark. Mark T minus two minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to move along smoothly. Now in the uh, terminal countdown portion. The automatic sequencer has stopped the replenishing of the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen. We're standing by uh, now to begin pressurization of the fuel tank, the second stage fuel tank pressurized, third stage fuel tank pressurized. The countdown continuing to move along smoothly, T minus 90 seconds, T minus 90 seconds. Countdown continuing smoothly. S4B propellant uh, pressurized. The indication now using the workaround showing the S4B propellant have been pressurized. Now looking at the liquid hydrogen tanks as uh, they become pressurized. LH2 aboard the second stage pressurized. All propellants now aboard the second stage pressurized as we approach the one minute mark in the countdown. Mark T minus one minute and counting now in the final minute of the countdown. At T minus 45 seconds, Gene Cernan will make the final guidance alignment. This is the uh, mark T minus 45 and Gene Cernan made that final guidance alignment. That's the last action taken by the crew aboard the space vehicle. Now approaching the half minute mark. T minus 33, T minus 30 seconds and continuing on now. Continuing on at the T minus 26 second mark, T minus 25. We'll get a final guidance uh, release at the T minus 17 second mark. T minus 17, final guidance release. We'll expect engine ignition at 8.9 seconds.
feeling everything's okay. It's blinding us here, blinding. Just going up through the speed of sound now. Everybody says looking great, right on the line. We're now one mile downrange. Launch vehicle 4.2 miles high. And there she goes. You can see that plume 2,000 feet long behind that rocket. Four miles downrange, eight miles high, and the velocity about approaching 3,000 feet per second. That's great. Well over a thousand miles an hour now, and up at about fifty thousand feet already. Less than a minute to go to the cutoff of the center engine on that first stage. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Check in. Mark, mode one, Charlie. And the flight dynamic officer says we look good on all sources, uh, right on the trajectory. Roger, check in. Here, go. Ten seconds to go to center engine well, cutoff. Dr. Gene Cran taking a status for staging. We say we look good for staging. Now it should be. And it's gone. Good. Inboard engine shutting down on time as planned. Look at the glow of that thing. Up around 30 miles already. G forces of about 4 G. Uh, Coming up now to separation. Three seconds. Coming up on first stage shutdown. Three seconds. And there it goes. And we've had shutdown on time on the first stage. Five. Right here. They're looking here. Looks good. Going out across the Atlantic like a star. I think we saw them all from here. Right here, Jack. The press is going. All five of them are running good. Okay. And you'll see the jettison of the center of the of the interstage skirt come in three seconds. There she goes. You just saw that flare there. And the tower should come away. You can just see the escape tower falling away. There's a faint dot. Steering edge converge, and CMC is go. You're going right down the pipe, Captain. Okay, Bob, I do confirm that. That's the automatic guidance system, the inertial guidance system performing properly. Breakers, and uh, we've seen it all. Ignition, uh, staging, and power. Right again. Follow 17, now 65 miles high. Okay, four minutes and we're we'll going here, Bob. Roger, Gene. We're going around the room. Let's go here. You're looking real good, Gene. Right down the line. This tiny flare in the sky there, over 65 miles high. Climbing out over the mid-Atlantic. Everything reported well. Everything looking good so far. Okay, 4.30 and we're still going board. Roger, 17, here go. Let me tell you, this night launch is something to behold. <laughs> Coming up on five minutes, so everything still looks very good in the launch of Apollo 17. The launch vehicle spacecraft now 80 miles high, 230 miles downrange. Well, Patrick, that was your, that was the first launch you'd seen. How, how did it feel? What was it like? Absolutely staggering. It's something that no words could possibly describe. It got all the glory and the majesty of a natural phenomenon. And somehow it was ten times more than that, simply because it was man-made. And I think the thing that impressed me most, not having seen a launch before, was not only the thunderous noise, but the actual shaking of the ground. We are some way from the rocket, obviously, quite a long way for safety's sake. But all the same, the ground quivered and shook. It was something that gave you, a, gave you an idea. I think there'd be immense power in that rocket. And 
We're just losing sighting of it now. Capcom, As it climbs out uh, across the Atlantic seven, with the second stage engine working perfectly at this moment. Down, uh, at about nine it looks like a perfect time. launch, finally, and it looks as if they may make it into orbit I without a hitch. About three and, a half, four minutes from now. and just look at that path. The pad there smoking and steaming as the millions of gallons of water jet all over it to cool it down after the effects of that launch. The launch of the last manned Apollo mission to the moon, possibly this century. Apollo 17 still right on the nominal trajectory. Uh, at an altitude now of about 92 nautical miles. Uh, we got four good motors and we're going 620. Roger, and we copied the camels and they look good. And with that magnificent launch, as Patrick said, an indescribable physical sensation to be here and see it, but equally a, a tremendous thing to see go up. Uh, we, we, we bring our launch program from Cape Kennedy to an end. It's, it's been a tremendously exciting night and a tremendously yeah, satisfying night for everybody here and everybody, I'm sure, in the launch car and everybody on board the spacecraft. It's